Hi, I'm Paula Renova, and today we're going to talk about six ways in which the ego can secretly sabotage our happiness. The ego is a very powerful subject. It's key for our happiness. It can create happiness in our lives or it can sabotage it. We're going to dive into the subject. And before we start doing that, make sure you like this video, that you subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button so that you know when we have no content for you. Comment how you felt about the video below and also share it with people that you know are going to benefit from this content so we can start spreading the joy, the soul healing, the consciousness expansion, the joy of life, as I always call it, right? As I always say that we're doing this in the carnal method. So when we talk about the ego, the word ego has many interpretations and many meanings. So there, it's specific to psychology, the vocabulary of psychology, also psychoanalysis, and in the translation of holy spiritual scriptures, especially from Buddhism and Hinduism, the word ego is used. And many of us tend to think we need to dissolve the ego, right? Or ditch the ego. Maybe it's about transcending the ego, but we don't eliminate it from our lives. In the Cardinal Method, which is the system I've developed to bring soul healing, consciousness expansion, and the joy of life to the world with you, right? Together, hand in hand, doing this as a group. What we, when we talk about the ego in the Cardinal Method, it's a, an aspect of our psyche. It's part of our inner world. And it has specific neutral characteristics. It is part of our adult life. It gives us a sense of individuality. It's part of the rational mind. It has to do with our social interactions. It is what brings self-responsibility and responsibility in our adult lives. So the ego can be healthy or unhealthy and that's where we need the soul healing processes when the ego is unhealthy it sabotages our happiness there are many ways the ego can do this i have pinpointed six major ways but there's so many more but if you try to understand this in a cardinal method perspective trying to make it simple right what's complex can be made simple in the cardinal method that's one of the reasons why the system exists we see the mind in four layers of consciousness the deep unconscious mind the subconscious mind the conscious mind and the super conscious mind so the deep unconscious is where the soul resides the past lives all the memories from past lives the ancestral memories that's the deep unconscious the subconscious mind is where the inner child resides and also the ego that's not developed so people who do not engage in knowing themselves and especially transforming themselves because knowing ourselves is important it's the first step but it's not enough we need to create self-transformation so that's why in the cardinal method we have a lot of theory to know ourselves but also a lot of practical tools instruments and ways to transform ourselves and practice practice creates change right so the unaware ego resides in the subconscious mind, autopilot mode. The conscious mind is where the conscious ego resides and also where the higher self starts to show up. And the superconscious mind is the realm of the higher self, the developed higher self consciousness and the superconscious higher consciousness that connects us all, right? The mind of God. So that's, those are the four layers of consciousness. A lot of us, may be living in autopilot mode. The subconscious mind may be ruling our lives. But when the conscious mind is developed, not only for the rational processes, but for self-understanding, self-knowledge and self-transformation, then you have a conscious ego that is ready to change. But when the ego is hijacked by the wounded inner child, when it lives in the subconscious mind, it can create sabotage to our happiness. So what are the six ways that the, the ego can secretly sabotage our happiness? If you don't know much about chakras, we have a video about chakras here, and I'm gonna explain this on a chakra level. So the center of personal power in the body is called the solar plexus, and it was, it's localized where your stomach is, a little bit to the left maybe, to the pancreas, but 
it is a center of personal power. It's the place of the ego. And when the ego is healthy, energy can travel from your personal power to your heart. So you can come from a place of a certainty, from a place of self-connection, from a place of confidence and self-esteem in the solar plexus, and you can love genuinely. So ideally, every human being has connected to his or her personal power enough in order to be able to love from a place of maturity in the heart. Many of us cannot do this yet. So the energy is trapped in the solar plexus. And that's when we see three of the sabotaging of the happiness um, mechanisms of the ego. One is judgment, when we judge other people. And judgment usually comes from lack of information. We just see something or someone, we immediately create judgment about it, coming from our subjective opinions, not from actual facts. So that's the non-developed ego right there creating judgment. And whenever we judge someone else, we are sabotaging our happiness because it feels good to connect to others and it doesn't feel good to be judging. It is a false happiness to feel superior when we judge other people, okay? So that's one of the ways the ego sabotages our happiness, judgment. The other one is control. It is exhausting. It is a fake pleasure. Controlling others may seem pleasurable to the very intense personalities, but it drains our energy and it's a fake kind of power. It isn't real power. It's very draining and again, it exhausts other people. No one wants to be around a controlling person. It just diminishes our ability to create connection with others and it just doesn't bring happiness on the contrary. So when we're very controlling, the ego hijacked by the wounded inner child, the immature ego is in charge because the higher self is not about control. The higher self is about being firm, knowing what you want and also surrendering, but not bossing other people around and especially not trying to control others. The third one is disqualification. This is a little different from judgment, okay? Because disqualification, you actually give yourself um, enough time to understand or to kind of know what the person is doing or saying. And this comes especially when people are starting a self-connection journey, a, a journey of personal development, usually with the facilitators of spiritual work. The most powerful enemy to your spiritual growth is your ego. It will find the most sophisticated ways to disqualify spirituality. It could be about judging the scriptures that you're connecting to, disqualifying spiritual spirituality as it is, disqualifying the people that are bringing spiritual knowledge to your life. It is so common for us to halt in our spiritual journey because the ego is saying no, because spirituality requires us to surrender. And if the ego wants to control, it will disqualify whoever or whatever is nudging you out of your comfort zone to surrender to spirituality. Okay, so all those three ways to sabotage your happiness are coming from a solar plexus um, realm. The ego is trapped in the solar plexus. But when the ego, the unhealthy ego, invades the heart chakra, the place of love, the place of the higher self, it's worse because it's not, it's not about other people anymore. It's you sabotaging yourself and being not very loving to yourself. So how does that happen? When the ego, the unhealthy ego invades the heart chakra, the place of love where you start becoming aware of your higher self. When we become bitter, when you know someone that is a bitter person, that person has already been too contaminated with judgment, control, and disqualification and is now becoming bitter kind of as a lifestyle. So bitterness sabotages our happiness big time. Also resentment. Resentment comes from an unhealthy ego because we're not choosing love when we feel resentful. We are choosing unhappiness. And that is an ego trip, literally. And the third heart chakra energy, which is the sixth way the ego can sabotage our happiness, is envy and spite. 
because then you're comparing yourself to someone else and feeling inferior. So that's the negative ego trip, right? <laughs> so people may think that it's pleasurable to feel superior to others in the solar plexus, but that is never genuine happiness. But when you're envying someone, and again, it, it is such a, a, a trip of the mind because you are not seeing reality. Everybody has problems. The people you believe are have it all, are so happy and I'm so unhappy. That is a mind trip. You don't know the story. And again, it's not about comparing yourself to others. This has been such a cliche for so long, but it's true, right? Comparing yourself to other people is a killer of happiness. It is useless and it disconnects you from reality. So envy and spite are huge happiness sabotaging mechanisms of the ego. And if you know someone in that vibration, instead of judging them, just know what's going on now that you are more connected to this vocabulary with the carnal method and just send them love. But know that the ego is in charge when that's happening. So judgment, control, and disqualification as fake personal power ego trips and bitterness, resentment, envy slash spite also as sabotaging mechanisms of the ego. I know this is not an easy subject, but soul healing, consciousness expansion, and the joy of life are not about partying all the time, right? It is about looking within and the truth is healing. So the more we know our blind spots, the more we can release our inner obstacles and outer obstacles as well, because life is a mirror image of what goes on within our souls, in our inner world. So the more we can pinpoint the blind spots and the obstacles with awareness, with knowledge, and with practice, with energy healing and soul healing practices, the more we can become connected to our higher selves. We cleanse our chakras, we create flow in our lives, and we definitely make the world a better place. So thank you so much for being here. Let me know what you thought about this conversation in the comments below. It's going to be wonderful to know your thoughts, and I will see you soon.